I'm with DJ Diesel, the biggest DJ in the world. I can't say welcome back to Houston because this is your city. Yeah, I've been living here for a year. I started off in Sugar Land and now I live in Pearland, but I'm, I'm very familiar with Houston. Yeah, how, how special is it for you to be DJing here in the city for all of us? Look, I love this city. Uh, my children are here. Uh, it's a fabulous city. I'm from San Antonio, but you know, Texas in general is just a, a fabulous state, but it's uh, a place that I'm familiar with. I haven't really DJ here in a while, I don't think. So we're just going to go out and have some fun and be safe and make sure everyone has a great time. All right, and so you've been here, like you said, a long time. I mean, music with zero, because I know you named every highway on there, every H-Town rapper. I was like, oh, he's familiar, and I always forget. I'm like, Shaq did that. Yeah, I've been, well, look, I, I entered Texas in 87, and I've been coming here ever since. So I'm, I'm a Texas fan. I love the people of Texas. Houston, Houston and Dallas are two of my tech, favorite Texas cities. One of them is one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> one, of <those. laughs> one of those is one of my favorite. So let's talk a little bit about what got you into DJing, because you've always been in the crowd. You know, you said, I'm going to the other side. What was it? The AF, which stands for the Adrenaline Factor. Mm -hmm. From 14 to 39. For me, it's all about the, <sighs> right? Mm -hmm. That's what drove me. Even in high school, you know, I went to small high school, San Antonio, we're 35 and 0, and if we win this game, we'll be 36 and 0. We'll be mm -hmm. the state champions. Just the, the crowd, the people. Same thing in Baton Rouge, LSU. Same thing in the NBA. And when I lost that, I don't like to use the word. I don't like to use the D word, but I was, I was down. Mm -hmm. I still get it every now and then. I, get, I go to the restaurant and you hear a few people clap, but I need a few hundred, few thousand, and I wasn't getting it. And I went to this festival called Tomorrow World, and there was a half a million people out there. Mm -hmm. And it's like you you do something and then you don't do it and you forget about it and then it hits you again. So I was like, oh, like this is it. So then I told the promoter who's standing over there, a guy mm -hmm. named Logan, I said, you know I could DJ? And he laughed at me. Yeah, right. So then I had to do the whole celebrity DJ circuit thing, which is fine. I had to pay my dues, but I'm not, I've been DJing since 85, 86. I'm a real DJ. That's what I was going to ask you. What do you DJ yeah, with? I, well, I... I started off with SB 1200s mm -hmm. and, and a Gemini mixer. In college, I, I DJed. I had I had to carry the crates around. I get twenty five dollars okay, a show. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm scratching and battling. Did all that. So wow. when I saw the tomorrow, I was like, I can do this. And I kept going to a, a couple, uh, you know, shows. And I wanted to see. I, I would see Nightmare. I would see Skrillex. I would mm -hmm. see Steve Aoki. And I was like, those guys are good, but I can do it. But I did it before. Mm -hmm. like, so. That's all I do it for. I do it for the adrenaline factor. And then when you talk about the sport, what makes the NBA a great sport, not because of LeBron, it's because of LeBron, it's because of Steph, it's because of all these people. So in, in, this, in the genre that I DJ in, it's a whole bunch of great DJs. So I'm not in it for it to be the best DJ in the world. Because trust me, I lose money when I go DJ. I do. Oh, I bet it's, no, a, it's I, kind I of a different thing. Like, like, all, like all the checks I get, which are not that high, I give them away. So, but for me, it's just about, you know, having a good time, making people smile and, you know, just, you know, enjoying myself. And tell me about the music you play, because you actually give the people a chance to get their music played by you. Yes, I like taking young artists that don't have the voice and giving them the voice. So the type of music I like is distress relieving music. Mm -hmm. When I'm in the car, as soon as the beat drops and I can go like this, <laughs> that starts to get me nod and it starts to get me happy. The endorphins start to flow. Now my stress is relieved and I'm happy. And that's how I get rid of my stress, my music. Like I could be, God darn it, this contract didn't go through today and I could ride in the car and do, 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 and I just start doing this in the car, especially in Texas where the weather's great, you roll the window down, what's up, man? You know, you see a, a, mm -hmm. a nice looking mamita linda. Hey, my mama, I'm in bed. So you, like, you, like, you know, all that stuff just helps you forget about all the stuff that, you know, stresses you out. And that's what, like, music and sports are the only two things that could help people get rid of their problems, period. And have you created a routine that you do prior to your set? Is there something that you like to do? Yes. Uh, General Dwight Eisenhower said, the greatest leaders are the ones that hire people that are smarter than you. So one of my best friends is, is also a DJ, mm -hmm. a, a way better DJ than me. We go over the set. And we argue and we fight. 
Same way me and Kobe argue. Same way me and LeBron argue. Me and D we argue. And that's what two alpha males do. Play this. No, play that. Play this. Play that. And we enjoy it. And then we enjoy doing this for other people. Like if we do a set and there's 50,000 people screaming and we see two people that don't scream, it was a terrible set. We don't let, we got to go back. And so like we, I don't look for the people that, I look for the people that's not enjoying it. It's like, oh, you don't like it? What about this song? So like we spot those people out and then if they don't like it, it was a terrible set, do it all over and it just keeps us motivated and it just keeps us going. And what is it? Because you carry yourself like that around everything. You want to pull the people up that are the furthest down and you want to make it fair for everyone. Yeah, my, my, my journey now from 49 to whenever I leave the surface about making other people happy. So when I go to the festival and see a kid or a person that has has spent their money to come watch, like, I, I take pride in that. Mm -hmm. I do. When I was young, my father took me to a San Antonio Spurs game. It was a terrible game. But I remember he had to borrow the money. So now he's like, damn it. It's a terrible game. I got to pay my guy back somehow, whatever. So he hits me in the chest and he says, son, if you ever get to the point to where people are paying to watch you perform, make sure you put on a show. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was a unique type of NBA player. I was like, and I would love to see, oh, there's, there's dad and his son. Mm -hmm. Or there's dad and mom. Or there's dad and his daughter. I would just pick two people out and just make sure they smile. And after they mm -hmm. smile, I look for somebody else. So these kids are paying money mm -hmm. to have a good time. Friday night, Houston. We got to rock out tonight. <laughs> you have to rock out. There's only one way to do it. And speaking of sons, real quick, how your son committed to TSU, your daughter committed to TSU, how proud does that make you to be a part of that? It makes me very proud. They're doing very well. I always tell them to follow their dreams. You know, I have six children, and for me, it's not about we don't need another NBA player. I would love to lawyer, physicist, engineer, real estate, whatever, but they're they make me very proud. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones. Mm -hmm. I have no problems from them. Uh, they're smart and they're educated and they're humble, and they follow my footsteps. They do charitable work and they're just, they're just great kids. And how special is it to have Johnny Jones with your son? I mean, what does that mean to you? It means a lot because Johnny helped me get to where I am today, so I know he knows what he's talking about. And my son needs to have that type of person around him to, you know, help him get to the next level. Yeah, and your daughter under Cynthia Cooper? That's very major. I saw some footage the other day. Cynthia Cooper is taking, to my, taking my daughter to a place I can never take her, so <laughs> I wish them all well. Okay. All right. Look in that camera. Invite the city out tonight. Tell them what it all is. I about. don't. You know what's crazy? Hold on. What's the name of the club tonight? Sakai. And don't take that personal, but Einstein said things you can get access to you should never memorize. So did my crew will tell you, I don't memorize nothing. Okay. So... Hey, this is Shaq. Make sure you come see me out. Where? Sakai. Whatever she said. <laughs> see you there tonight. No, this is Shaq Diesel. Come check me out tonight at Sakai. Be, get ready to bang. Okay, so we've been sitting here together. We're kind of the same size. Let's go ahead and break it on down. Oh, I thought you were asking me to dance. I was oh, like, break it on down. Yeah, we're going to break it on down. <laughs> okay, All right, see? It. I'm almost as tall as him.